Inkscape's pencil tool is often overlooked as just being a fun tool for drawing squiggly lines. However, it has quite a few very useful features, and in this video we'll learn about them all. The most common use of the pencil or freehand tool located here in the toolbox is for freehand drawing, which we can do by simply clicking and dragging in the canvas. This is great for doing things like sketching. If you want to continue drawing this path, we can do so by clicking and holding on one of the anchor points at the ends, then dragging. And we can close off the path by connecting the two anchor points together. We can also create straight line segments with the pencil tool. To do this, we simply click a point in the canvas, then click another point. We can hold Ctrl after clicking the first point to restrict the angle of the line. And we can add more segments by clicking the anchor points. If we look down here in the status bar, we can see that the paths we draw by default have a black stroke color and no fill color. If we open the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here, we can use the fill tab to give the path a fill color. And we can use the stroke paint tab to change the stroke color. We can also go to the stroke style tab and increase the width of the stroke. If we were to draw another path right now, it would have the default style of a black stroke and no fill. And that's because if we open the preferences dialog with this button up here, in the preferences for the pencil tool, the default style of new objects here is set to this tool's own style. If we instead change it to last used style, now when we draw a path, it will use the style of the previous path we created. If we change the setting back to this tool's own style, the paths will go back to having the default style. By default, the paths we create with the pencil tool are going to look a bit jagged, especially if we're using a normal mouse. And that's because if we look up here in the controls bar, we have this smoothing setting, which lets us control how smooth the paths will be, and the default value of 10 is pretty low, so the paths stay pretty accurate to our mouse movement, but aren't very smooth. If we increase this, the paths we draw will be smoother. If we go too high, however, the paths will be super smooth, but they won't be very accurate. On the other hand, if we go very low, the paths will follow our mouse movement very accurately, but they will be pretty wobbly. Also, if we go to the node tool, we can see that the path we created with low smoothing has a whole bunch of nodes. If we create a lot of paths with lots of nodes, it can cause Inkscape to slow down a lot. If we select one of the smoother paths, we can see it requires much fewer nodes. One thing to know about the smoothing setting is that it only works on the paths we create after we change the setting. So if I select this wobbly path here and go back to the pencil tool, no matter how high or low I set smoothing to, it won't change the smoothing of the selected path. If you want to smoothen an existing path, we can go up to the path menu and choose simplify. The shortcut for simplify is Control L. However, up here next to the smoothing setting, we have this little button that says LPE based interactive simplify. If we toggle this on, then draw a path. As long as we have the path selected, we can change its smoothing using the smoothing setting. Also, when we have the interactive simplify button enabled, we get a new button here that says LPE simplify flatten. If the path we have selected is one that we created using Interactive Simplify and we click this button, the path becomes a normal path and now changing the smoothing setting will no longer affect it. At the left of the controls bar, we have three mode options we can choose from. The default is the Bezier mode, which lets us do simple freehand drawing. The second mode is the Spiral mode. With this, if we put smoothing on something like 50, we can get some really nice circular curves in our paths. Now if we go to the node tool and adjust the nodes, the curves will maintain their smoothness. The third mode is B-spline. This one also lets us create smoother paths. If we go to the node tool with the B-spline path selected, we get these nodes near the curves that we can move around. 
And if we hold down shift, we can move these circular handles along the lines for further control over the curvature. If we go back to the pencil tool, when we're on either spiral mode or B-spline mode, we get this new button here that says flatten spiral or B-spline LPE. If we have a spiral or B-spline path selected and we click this button, the path will become a normal path. So if we switch to the node tool now, we just get the normal nodes that we can use for adjusting the path. If we do this with a spiral path, adjusting the nodes won't maintain the smooth curves anymore. To the left of the smoothing setting in the controls bar, we have this button that says Use Pressure Input. If we toggle it on, we get a few extra settings we can change. First we have Min and Max. If we're using a pressure sensitive device, like a drawing tablet, we can vary the pressure on the device to vary the width of the paths we create with the pencil tool. Depending on the pressure we use, the width will be some value between min and max. If we're just using a normal mouse, however, the width of the path will just be the max value, like this. This makes the paths look like they were drawn with something like a marker. We can also use the smoothing setting with this. The other new setting we get is caps. This lets us control the appearance of the ends of the paths. The default of round, of course, gives the path rounded ends. We also have butt caps, square caps, which is like an extended version of butt caps, peak, and zero width. This one could be useful for drawing line art. When we draw paths using these settings, instead of getting a black stroke with no fill, we get a black fill with no stroke. We can change the fill color, and we can give it a stroke if we want by holding shift and clicking a color swatch. A really cool feature of the pencil tool is the shape setting up here. With this, we can change the shape of the paths we draw in various ways. Before we try these, let's increase the smoothing a bit, as the shape options tend to work much better with smoother paths. The first shape option we have is triangle in. When we draw a path with this option, it gives the path a triangular shape, with the base at the first node and the tip at the last node. We might not be able to see it well at first, however, because the width is too small. To change the width, we have the scale setting up here. Now we can clearly see that the path has a triangular shape. Another way to change the width is to go to the node tool, which reveals this diamond handle coming off the first node. We can drag this in and out to change the width of the path. We can also still adjust the nodes of the path. Also, with most of the paths we create with the shape options, instead of getting a black stroke with no fill, they get a black fill with no stroke. We can change the fill color, and we can give it a stroke. The next shape option we have is triangle out. This is basically the opposite of triangle in, as it will put the tip of the triangle at the first node and the base at the last node. Triangle in and triangle out also share the same scale setting. Both of the triangle options actually use the power stroke path effect. At the top right, you can find a link to a video in which I explain power stroke and the many things we can do with it. Okay, next we have ellipse. This gives the paths an elliptical shape, with the ends tapered and the center being the thickest part. And again, we might have to increase the scale setting to see it better. Like with the triangle options, we can also use the node tool to adjust the width. The next shape option is from clipboard. For this one, we'll need to create either a path or a shape. Now if we copy the shape into the clipboard with Control c then go back to the pencil tool and draw a path, it uses the copied object to shape the path. Like with the other shape options, we can change the width using either the scale setting or the node tool. We can still adjust the nodes as well. We can also of course change the fill and stroke style of this path. But if we draw another path, it will get the default style of a black stroke and no fill. If we change the style of this path, and we want our next one to have the same style, we can open the preferences dialog, and in the pencil tool preferences, we can change style of new objects to last used style. Now a new path will get the same style as the previous path. Changing the setting back to this tool's own style 
we'll get the new paths to default style. Both the ellipse option and the from clipboard option use the pattern along path path effect. This path effect in combination with the pencil tool is great for creating custom brushes and in the video linked at the top right, I explain exactly how to do so. The next option is bin from clipboard. Like with from clipboard, we need a path or shape copied into our clipboard for this to work. We should still have our shape here copied, so if we create a path, we can see that it shapes the path using the copied object, similar to from clipboard. The main difference, however, is that bin from clipboard gives the path the same fill and stroke style as the copied object. We can change the style if we want though. Another difference is that if we go to the node tool, we get these handles at the location of the copied object. If we adjust these, it will change the shape of the path. As you can see, however, it doesn't change the copied object, and we can actually delete the copied object now if we want. If we go back to the node tool and hover over the path, we can see an outline of the copied object at the original location. And if we select the path, we get the handles again. Another cool thing with bin from clipboard is that we can do it with a group of objects. So for example, we can create two shapes, select them both, group them together by right clicking and choosing group, copy the group with control C, then go to the pencil tool and draw a path, and it will use the entire group to shape the path. Bin from Clipboard uses the Bin Path Effect, which is another great one for creating custom brushes with the pencil tool. And yep, I also have a video about that, which you can find at the top right. Okay, the final shape option, last applied, will simply use the previous shape settings. A hidden feature of the pencil tool is something called Sketch Mode. To access Sketch Mode, we hold down the Alt key before we draw a path. Now if we continue holding Alt and release the mouse, it doesn't actually draw the path yet. And while still holding Alt, if we draw another path, we get a red path between them. The red path is an average of the previous paths we drew while in sketch mode. As long as we keep holding Alt, we can keep drawing paths, and it will average them all. This allows us to keep tweaking the path until we like the final result. And when we finally release the Alt key, it will create the average path. Another hidden feature of the pencil tool is the ability to draw dots. To do this, we hold down the control key and click in the canvas. And these are by default drawn very small, so we have to zoom in some by holding down the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Here it is. I'll create some more. If we hold down control and shift, it will create slightly larger dots. If we hold down control and alt, it will create randomly sized small dots. And if we hold down control, shift and alt, it will create randomly sized larger dots. These dots are actually just circle objects, so we can change the style of them and if we go to the Circles and Ellipses tool, we can modify their shape. If we open up the Preferences dialog, in the Pencil Tool Preferences, we have this Control plus Click Dot Size setting. The size of the dots is based on the current stroke width of the Pencil Tool, and the default size is three times the stroke width. So we can change the size of the dots either by changing the default stroke width of the Pencil Tool, or we can change this value here. Now the dots I create will be larger. Okay, and that should do it for a complete guide to the pencil tool. I hope you learned some new things about the pencil tool in this video and that you decide to use it more often in your work. And if you already have a favorite use of the pencil tool, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.